it meant anything goes. Anyone could die, anyone could fall in love, anyone could die, anyone could fall in love, anyone could die, anyone could die. Agent Concept was so cool. Agent Apocalypse. Concept was so cool. People couldn't believe it. Had to believe it. People couldn't believe it. That mean, they had to believe it. Everything that you had on the down level. How can we know? Everything that you had on the down level. How can we know? Everything that you had on the down level. How can we know? Jeremy Greer. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast where Gary and I are going issue by issue through the Age of Apocalypse comic book event from the 1990s. Gary, how are you, my man? Living through the age of an apocalypse Mm -hmm. now. 2020. Looking at this cover that says June, and I'm like, oh yeah, that is June. (laughs) This is when all this horrible shit happened. (laughs) Uh, yeah, man, a, every once in a while, I get the I get the idea of uh, in my head of like, wow, twenty twenty is a worse apocalypse than the age of apocalypse, and then we have you know, let's drown a few hundred innocent people in the hold of a ship like we have in this issue. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I guess I'm not gonna. It's silly to compare. Why even bother comparing? Yeah. So I mean, even though to be fair, I don't actually know if the people who are trapped on that cruise liner because of Corona and were throwing themselves off the ship to kill themselves are still out there. So so it's not like twenty twenty doesn't have us. <laughs> Has anybody checked on the cruise sleeve. ship? I hadn't, I'll be honest with you. I hadn't even thought about the cruise ship in quite some time, my man. Like that's, I, I feel like I haven't thought about the cruise ship in years, but I'm sure I thought about it two weeks ago when I saw it in the news. And there's wow. just been a year's worth of news uh, in, the, in the intervening two weeks. It's a lot. Um, so you, yeah, it is a, it's a nonstop deluge of a lot. And you can't uh, ignore it. And you can't fix it. Uh, and it is <laughs> um, an existentially untenable place to be. Um, and there are problems of all sizes. Yeah. You know, so, it's like, you know, um, no. we're, we're going to be, speaking of. we're going to be talking about Excalibur <laughs> today, which is yep. written by Warren Ellis, uh, who was recently accused of, I mean, not even necessarily accused. I don't, I don't even know what the proper terminology for this, but a series of tweets alleging yeah. various comic books, personalities of, um, grooming young women, pressuring them for sex or are hitting on them at a young age. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on about not just Warren Ellis, but a bunch, a bunch of comic books, people. Um, just to knock it out before we, cause we're going to be talking about Warren Ellis, you know, throughout this episode and another one that we're recording today, we, we're aware of it. We know about it. There's basically no information. The woman who tweeted about it, uh, has subsequently taken down the tweets. Um, I don't think probably that because of they are incorrect, but probably cause she was getting a whole shit ton of assholes yeah. tweeting at her about it. Warren Ellis at the time of recording, this hasn't said anything. And to be honest with you, I don't think days of future cast is the, is the place where, as we're covering X Men stuff, that we're gonna like really get into the, the, you know, what has Warren Ellis or any of these people done or not done or various things like that. But we are aware of yeah, it. We know we, about it. We think that kind of shit sucks. So don't tweet at us yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we at at this point, based on what we know, you know, there are there are things that like if it came out like, oh, Warren Ellis had a basement full of children, you know, or like a like he was he was running a farm, you know, like the farm that Dom DeMillo runs. Like, yeah, we'd probably stop talking about his comics uh, midway through. We just don't know enough about it yet. Um, just to put this in context, we're recording this on uh, June 17th. So if, you know, June 18th, uh, it comes out, you know, all the, all kinds of horrible stuff. Just know at the time of recording, we did not know it. Um, and uh, if something like that happens, we will adjust accordingly. We'll yeah. figure something out. If, if we need to do something, we will. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is by no means like I, I enjoy everything we're recording about this session. Um, and, but this is by no means like a full throated endorsement of, uh, of Warren Ellis or anything like that. I don't think anybody who is even a fan of his is going to say his 1995 Marvel universe work is the strongest stuff. Uh, you know, even though I do, I do like these issues. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with like him as a person or anything like that. Um, yeah, we're talking about Excalibur issue two. Uh, today if uh, to remind everybody this is the series dealing with a uh, nightcrawler going to grab uh meet with his mom in order to be put in touch with destiny who can hopefully confirm bishop's 
alternate universe stuff. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, and uh, on the cover, take a look at these uh, mom jeans, these like mom pants that Callisto's wearing. Yeah, dude. Those are those are tucked in to the boot. Yep. Yep. High waisted. High waisted. Ducked. ducked like looking, yep. and she's shooting what looks to be directly at Nightcrawler, and still somehow missing. There's a there's a weird, in a white void. <laughs> yeah. There there's a weird thing with uh, some of these comics where. Like we're we're arguably like in the future we're in this like fantasy land where people have powers and these you know gods are on Earth and they're mutating folks with science and then like Callisto still has like a like a like a snub nosed forty five right like she has like yep. a, she has a revolver and it happens throughout a couple of the issues that we're going to be talking about in this session and it just mm-hmm. it never fails to make me laugh like just seeing a straight up gun is so like it's it's the same thing I get when I watch when I watch people play Shadow Tower. Like when you get a straight up gun in Shadow Tower, I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I found a pistol. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, Bulbasaur has a gun. Uh, also on this cover, there's a couple uh, during this session bits of art that I want to point out, which I know for an audio medium is, is dodgy. Um, look, I'd like to draw your attention, Jeremy, on the cover of this to the guy in the lower right uh, who has been like bisected partway up the shoulder yeah. and appears just to be a freestanding torso mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or bust. Like they cut him off like halfway through his shoulders. The guy beside uh, him looks here. like he may have just been teleported into the wood of this sh- like ship that's yeah. floating into a void. So <laughs> like there, there's some uh, man, when we get to the, uh, we're recording an issue about X-Man today. There's a, there's a panel where we're going to play a little game of explain to me what this guy's hand is doing. <laughs> uh, Cause it's <laughs> a pretty incredible hand going on. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Yeah, so we start in uh, um, do, 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 Avalon. Avalon. Yeah, aka yep. the Savage Land, um, and it's on fire, which is bad because it's supposed to be this home and refugee for mutants that have escaped um, from both apocalypse and, and, and the humans. And um, this yeah. is supposed to be Eden, um, but this is uh, not actual Avalon. This is Destiny seeing Avalon as she touches uh, Switchback. Um, yes. And so she so Destiny's whole thing is that she is a psychometric clairvoyant, which is just a lot of words to say that she sees people's features. Like I, we we have when a word for that. Them. We have a word for yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah, exactly. She uh the the dead zone. Yeah. He's Christopher Walken in the dead zone or whatever. Sure. Um we haven't been introduced to him yet, but we do have the uh the character in the background here. We're gonna find out this is Cypher, uh, who looks like Katie Lang. Yes. Uh which I like. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, so she she sees uh, Avalon burning. She's upset. It's the dead zone. Yes. Also, here um, is um, Kane, um, aka Juggernaut, who is doing his whole peace thing. He's going to peace out so hard that he has an aneurysm in this issue, and I can't wait. It's, uh, <laughs> or it's I think it's next issue, but it's real oh, good. Like, okay. hey, Juggernaut fans, <laughs> if you wanted to see the Age of Apocalypse Juggernaut do anything, uh, you get to watch him headbutt a desk or whatever, and then die. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're going to need to uh, uh, so, hit up some what if comics, jug, jug fans. <laughs> <laughs> what if the juggernaut had taken an aspirin that morning? Um, yeah, and thinned out his blood a little bit. Uh, so we cut over to uh, Apocalypse's forces, uh, the Madri, breaking into the ghost dance. Uh, if you recall, this is where uh, James Proudstar is there. The uh, indigenous people have been praying for an end of Apocalypse, and they have done a raid yes. on them. And he uh, pulls out a pistol. Uh, real great panel of him kicking and shooting at the same time. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a real goofy, like goose step. feels very action figurey, right? Like this feels like I got, oh, like I've got, I've got yeah. my, I've got my guys and they're about to fight my other guys and I gotta, I gotta do a high kick with one of them. So I also, I don't think I've ever seen a costume that looks more painted on than a uh, <laughs> Proud Stars thing right here. Like he's wearing, it's like he has an open vest, but the vest is so skin tight as the, to where there's no seams i mean if i was rocking a like abs like that number one i'd be yeah, wearing yeah. this but number two like that dope chest scar like that feels like something that i would do in a soul's character creator and be like yeah i gotta i can't can't, <laughs> can't wear any chest armor because i got this cool scar yeah for fashion souls i gotta make sure that i like uh, i gotta get the aesthetic armor that i painted on it's gonna really lock in my uh, base that's... base player aesthetic that i'm going for bloodborne yeah. 2 <laughs> <laughs> I hope Bloodborne 2 introduces the bass player's glass. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, you get that like Kane Hurst wig on a on a male character and you get a bass yeah. player ponytail. Like if you've already got you the, re- the shaded re- glasses, like you're there. Yeah. <laughs> a real night bassist. 
stuff going on. <laughs> bassist of the night. Yeah. I'm a wear bassist. Every time the full moon comes out, I go to the local jazz club and fucking shred. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they, they, uh, they take them out. Yeah. You know, the, the Madrai do it because they were armed with lasers. Uh, you know, Proud Star just has pistols and stuff. And uh, they've taken them out. We cut over to the sub that they sent. Um, there are like 100 refugees and Nightcrawler to send them to Avalon. And uh, the air conditioner breaks. Yes. Um, everyone is choking to death um, and uh, and slowly uh, suffocating. Yeah, it doesn't look there. good for anybody. Um, and the guy who is running the sub is like, hey, you know, we, we took a hit and like this thing is old. So guess what? Everybody dies. Um, there's a, you know, talking about some art like the in the top left panel when the you switch back to the captain of the submarine like who mm-hmm. is this woman like looking at the phone like she has never seen a phone before <laughs> super good it looks like a roy lichtenstein right uh, yeah yeah like like <gasps> uh kind of gasp everybody's doing some real big uh you know teeth like yeah. somebody you know was like wanted to mimic joe Majerera, but not joe Majerera. um we got, you got nightcrawler in the upper right panel that looking like morph and then right below um, that like yeah. uh or I guess that's coming through. I was thinking like, they look like that the way that that's done. Isn't like a, like when it, when it cuts out, like it doesn't just go screech. It's actually in the text balloon, like in the dialogue balloon. So I'm like, did mm-hmm. the guy just say the screech? Captain said screech. <laughs> yep. The captain is summoning first mate screech. <laughs> oh no. Uh, <laughs> What's that on his finger? <laughs> saved by the buoy. The, uh, like, uh, saved by the diving bell. That would have been better. Uh, so uh basically he's saying like hey we you know, our stealth rays took a hit we have to go uh surface mm-hmm. and nightcrawler is like are you out of your mind like we don't know if we're out of range we're gonna get caught um but he looks over you know and sees the uh the people uh dying uh it's very sad like slowly starving to death um here and uh we cut over to the sub surfacing um you know they broke air uh they have to be you know incredibly careful um and they can't get the doors open to the uh the cargo array they don't have enough fuel for a torch they don't have a uh, a way to open it or a, a jump pack or whatever to open up the door so people are still starving even though they've surfaced yeah um which made me or not starving uh asphyxiating yeah. which makes me wonder why they surfaced i thought surfacing was going to give air or something well i feel like the, um, you know those people the other people like the the captain and the crew were also probably about to start choking. Like if the air conditioner is broken, it was, just, oh, yeah. it was just hitting the room that's closed with a hundred people in it first, as opposed to the, yeah, the you're right. The ship. Um, they, they have a debate about firing the flare, which I guess they do because in between pages, like another ship shows up and they're already cutting through, uh, the, the door. And this is Callisto ship. Um, yeah. And, and Callisto and her folks look, uh, extremely suspect from the word go. Like they've got, they got they've got like earrings and nose rings. They look like pirates, Gary. Yeah, fucking pirates. They, they look like pirates. It's almost as if they're pirates. One <laughs> one guy's got a cool scorpion tattoo. Fucking uh, uh, team his scorps. Ear. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, team, team scorps. It's old enough that hair's grown back on it. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and basically, the captain says, "Like, listen, you know, I'm glad we're able to help you get you gas for this torch. You're going to Avalon." Um, I don't think you're going to make it. Let me take your passengers. You know, don't worry. I knew your predecessor. Like I've been doing this for a while. Uh, they break in, they get everybody out, which one of the things, one of the people inside the hold has a Wolverine shirt. Yeah. Uh, which I love that, uh, in this world, <laughs> the implication <laughs> is like before professor Xavier died and it made the world go to shit. But for a little while, Wolverine was t-shirt famous. <laughs> yeah. There's a fright. Cause it's his old costume and stuff. Too. Yeah. It's really great. Uh, he's also next to, uh, G- it looks like Gideon from the externals, but with a big beer belly. I love that. Um, <clears throat> some of the background characters in this are very good. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Nightcrawler has disappeared though. He is outside. Uh, he was able to teleport out, but he wasn't able to, to take anybody with him because he was extremely weakened. In fact, he feels like he's about to die, but he promised himself he would see his mother before he does. Um, yeah. and from here we switch over to the, uh, apocalypse's crew, which is supposed to be chasing the dark, dark rider, pale riders, the pale riders who are yeah. chasing down, um, and trying to basically suss out where Avalon is for apocalypse. Um, this is, uh, Moonstar, Deadpool, and, um, who is this other chick? Dem- Demask. Demask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who I'm not super familiar with. No. Uh, from, from the comics and Deadpool is now known as, uh, dead guy Wade. Dead man Wade in uh in this thing. Um Damask is the leader. 
she's trying to find everybody. She's annoyed because Moonstar, you know, in this world is a sadist, uh, has been carving things into Deadpool's forehead uh, and then watching it disappear with his healing factor. Sure. Uh, here. And you get the sense that Dead Man Wade is, uh, you know, a dangerous kind of bioweapon thing. Like he's chained to his chair mm-hmm. uh, here and stuff. And that's going to pay, you know, going to end up being true in the next, uh, next issue. Um, so they get a signal from the Citadel. Um, I love Apocalypse's like burning fist emoji. Yes. <laughs> that, that he sends before he <laughs> calls somebody. You know, uh, on thinking face, we often talk about like practical uses for emojis. <laughs> like that's kind of the, yeah, yeah. the the bit and like, boy, this is a great one for the burning fist emoji that Apple has not, yeah. is too scared to put in <laughs> iOS 13. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know, and it's very weird that Apocalypse is doing this. I was totally convinced this was going to be Mystique. Yeah, me too. You know, because it's like Apocalypse calling his his person, and introducing himself. This is Apostle Apocalypse. Restate your current orders, Damask. I think is really like, hey, tell me what you're doing and tell me where you're at. Yeah, is very weird and suspicious. Like if you call me Lord, I expect you to to be able to determine who I am on the video phone, right? Like if you tell, yeah. if, if if you're supposed to address me as my Lord and you don't recognize me when I Facetime you, we have a problem. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I'm not your Lord in that case. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I feel like I'm your side kind of spills- lord. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be your side lord. You know, my, my, my lord says he's thirsty. I come run. If your All lord right. is busy on Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you might be a little. Um, so she basically says like they're, they're tracking the location, uh, et cetera. Apocalypse says it's very important and that uh, Magneto has a lot of threads and we have to cut them all down. Um, I'm sending a secondary expedition to follow you. Yes. So tell me where you're at at all times. Um, and instead of just getting a uh, nightcrawler, kill Avalon. <laughs> um, which again is also made me think this was suspicious. Possibly. It's not a place you know? <laughs> unless you can kill it. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it, you know, kill Avalon. Uh, and this is horrible to Damask for some reason that we don't understand. Like she hates this. She's super mad and gets really annoyed at, uh, Moonstar um carving up dead man wade and kills her uh so rip age of apocalypse moon star yes that was quick um damask here like with the weird line of like do, w- 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 why is she not move or deadpool was like why is she not moving and she says because i just killed her and i loved it and i'm like i mean it was like it was like 30 seconds hannibal can hannibal the cannibal like what are you doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and and this this character is gonna have a face turn in a little bit and turn to a good guy pretty soon yeah um it's pretty weird it made me wonder if this would make more sense if i knew anything about the mask with her fucking chester cheetah gloves and shit um yeah i don't i don't really i don't really get it yeah uh, completely we switch back um, to callisto um who is offloading all of these survivors from the sub onto her ship and convincing the captain of the sub to like jet out like oh don't worry like you know, I got all of this. You go get some gas for your ship. And he's like, cool, 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 cool. And then the ship just sinks as Callisto drives off or sails yep. off, I guess. Um, What's well, a sub? I, I don't think it's supposed to supposed to be going under. I think it's supposed to be going back under like a sub, not dying. Oh, you think? I think so. I, just I mean, I could be wrong about that. I just figured with all the air bubbles, like that, that was a problem sink, not a, not a good sink. But I, yeah, maybe you're the submarine it, expert in duck feet, and I just didn't know about it. it really <laughs> stepped into a fucking minefield here. <laughs> it's called a, it's called a death charge. Where we come from? All right, all right, all right, Gary Butter Clancy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you could you could be right. I just feel like this this comic would have shown that, mm-hmm. like they would have shown them sabotaging the sub or something, because yeah. it has not been particularly subtle. 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 Um. So we go over to Callisto. Is like. Listen, uh, you're, uh, here's the thing. Give us all your gold and doubloons. Uh, <laughs> you give us all your treasure. Because uh, as a pirate, I mean, as a, you know, as a, a person, I like that kind of stuff. If we get boarded, this will be our cover. We'll say we're transporting your doubloons and watches. Also, go down into the ballast tanks because they're shielded. Sure. Seems um, legit. And it, uh, by the time she's convincing them, they've already gone down there. And they're all just like, wait a minute. Um, it's very funny. Yeah, the the, the uh, rogues gallery in here is just like a bunch of people like, hey, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, we already agreed to this shit. Like it's like they've quantum leaped into this uh, position. 
Um, there's also a pirate with an earring that is one ball and chain. Yes. Uh, that's incredibly spiky. And I was just like, man, you cannot lay down. Uh, you're going to hurt yourself. That's how you know he's hardcore, Gary. That thing hits him all day long. Yeah, <laughs> he's built up a, a callus. Does it hurt when your earring scratches you? Every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so Nightcrawler didn't think this was good. So he did not go under. Uh, and he uh, he's suspicious. He goes to try to open up the ballast tanks. And when he does, he sees that they've opened up the ballast tanks. And they've just dumped all of these like nearly starved and oxygen deprived humans uh into the ocean to yes. kill them r.i.p all of these people um uh, they and they yep. say that this is the sixth time they have done this just this year alone so like they're all chilling yeah. they decide to like relax and have some drinks because that's just who these people are they're super evil yep uh and you can tell because they come up upon something called the atrocity zone um which is different than the atrocity they did Yes. Uh, this is Apocalypse uh, was creating too many corpses and started dumping them to make like garbage islands in the sea. Uh, and I was just like, oh man, like you can burn those things. <laughs> well, you can burn Apocalypse. them. Or like, you we can... figured that out. You know? <laughs> in, the, in the comic, in the X-Men comic, we're going to see that there's a whole facility for turning corpses into like usable matter. Goo. Yeah. 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 So like. You turn them into goo. Like each one of these, a hundred of these guys gives you a gram of bone marrow juice to create X-Man. Yeah. You know? <laughs> seems like a pretty, li- like if you've got juice. a bunch of corpses, turn them into, turn them into X-Man. Like that seems. Yeah. Like- turn them turn into lemonade, you know? Uh, but instead he just <laughs> puts them in big floating island full of gigantic dragonflies out in the middle of the ocean, which is, you know, pretty wild. And they accidentally went into this. Um, they, uh, the captain gets shot and called a tow rag were accidentally driving into this and they can't move because their uh rudders are all gummed up with with corpse yeah uh you know so this sucks for these guys uh our, our x-man didn't do it or anything <laughs> yeah, it just kind of happened as an Nightcra- accident nightcrawler didn't do this <laughs> yeah also the name of the uh, of callisto's ship is x from society which i think is just yeah. very <laughs> it's very teenage like I, i'm listening to my first green green day album and writing straight yeah. edge on my knuckles and you know what i'm saying like i'm i'm there oh, callisto man. and lil Zan together at last <laughs> finally the crossover that 2020 <laughs> deserves frankly <laughs> <laughs> little x man um the uh so nightcrawler starts taunting uh her like you're gonna die for everything you've done and it's like well you might have tried to prevent any of this nightcrawler um it's a very reactive nightcrawler we got going on yeah so he's um, he starts like killing them one by one essentially and um uh, eventually gets into a one-on-one fight with callisto with gun versus sword and um it mm-hmm. looks kind of bad until who comes in from a helicopter that nobody had heard come in but mystique yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep mystique with future guns so that's how you can tell she's gonna win yeah um yeah, Man, the, there's some, the there's way that Mystique is dressed is very funny to me, like action Mystique. Yeah, this is like in this b- big bulky jacket Mystique. Like, is it cold? Yeah, is that like I know yeah, they're I, going to the Savage Land, so I guess they're going to go through yeah, some the, coldness. But nobody else is cold, so no. The uh, yeah, I, I just uh, Laura Croft, like Mystique, mm-hmm. you know, who pops up here. Um, I can't help but think Nightcrawler was not in that much trouble, given that he can teleport before this. Uh, but this is supposed to be the save the day moment, and this is who he's been looking for yep so they've been reunited and the next issue is going to deal with that yep uh but we're not no. not yet anyway we're gonna no, be we're, we're gonna take a trip over to um x-man i think or no factor uh, x factor x, x. Um, yep the clever rearrangement of x factor in the meantime um, if you uh mm-hmm. if you feel like coming out this you have wait what what day is this what day are, are we doing the things, Gary? 27th to 28th is when uh, Duck Fest Correct. is? Okay. So if you're listening to this on the early feed or as it comes out uh, next weekend on the 27th to 28th, is going to be Duck Fest 2. Obviously, we're not doing that in person this year, so we decided to do it mm-hmm. all digital. We're going to be online, Gary. Yeah. Uh, we finally joined the, the Twitch generation. Yes. Shout out for six months sub. You guys, I had a realization um, the other day, Gary. Can I? Can I? Can I be embarrassed? Yeah. Can I admit an embarrassing thing to you? Um, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I think this episode is only like seventeen minutes long. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I watched. I think I've mentioned it a couple of times. I watch a bunch of Mario streamers, and that's like one of the things mm-hmm. is like, oh, you know, thank you for so many months. Thank you for so many months, and like yeah. occasionally, 
um, people that I know will get uh, partnered on Twitch or whatever, um, and I'll be like, I'm going to sub to these people for one month and like boost them up, right? Like, like just just trying mm-hmm. to help my friends out. Um, and the first time I did this, I realized that to sub for somebody for a month on Twitch is like six dollars, um, which is ins- okay. insanity to me because I would hear these people say like, "Oh, thank you for the 17 months," and I'd be like, "Are people spending a hundred fucking dollars on one time to sub for?" 17 months like what the fuck is and it took me uh, just a ridiculously long time to realize like that's how long they had been a sub it's an anniversary yeah yeah it's not like i have yeah. bought 17 t- twitch tokens and then have given them to you know grand pooh bear it's that i have done that for 17 months now um so yeah. yeah i did not know how any of that shit worked i've been confused for a long time like one time it was like thank you for the 80 months and i'm like did somebody just spend 450 <laughs> fucking dollars <laughs> <laughs> just uh that'd be pretty wild like I, if I die before the end of this, my kid's going to inherit this Twitch sub. Where do my, where um, do my bits go? Where do my bits go? <laughs> so I need to talk to my lawyer immediately. Uh, yeah. I got to get a bits. will get your Twitch dot twitch.tv slash will plus living will. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, that, that's great. I, I was, um, Mario maker, uh, stream stuff. Um, I got involved in that for a little while watching, um, and watched, uh, uh, let's play or I like do something called checkpoint league. Uh, which was a competition a like Kaizo Mario level maker made where you had people compete mm-hmm. um, during levels. That was really compelling. Yeah. So if you're end up if you're looking for anything new, that I would recommend the um a lot the of the dudes that I watch I'll do that stuff on uh, they'll do blind Kaizo races on um the um that's the, the the awesome games done quick. Um, they usually have a oh, Mario yeah. segment and they do that stuff. That's where I found a lot of these dudes at was just watching like blind Kaizo stuff and it's super fun watching them like yeah talk because they're not mic'd up or anything but like watching them like actively discuss like no no you gotta jump you gotta do that you gotta you know then you want to put like uh, like it's just very very fun like that shit is mm-hmm. just gold to me and any of that mario shit just works it's real wild like it's it's fun it's fun to watch because it's just like it's such a simple game but there's so much weird depth to it <clears throat> um we're not gonna be doing any mario maker for duck fest uh gary and i are I mean, going- you know maybe we're on days of future cast uh <laughs> be a while before we get to the end of the mario works uh, i mean come on <laughs> if they release an x-men power up there like we'll be there for an episode <laughs> yeah um god yeah, yeah. Get, get the wolverine mushroom <laughs> now, you, now mario has claws <laughs> be amazing goomba blood just flashing so, everywhere <laughs> you start regenerating so whenever you turn small you get big again perfect yeah this is, <laughs> nintendo where are you at um uh, yeah Instead, we're going to be talking about The Long Night, Marvel's Wolverine podcast. Yeah. Uh, which I finished and liked. Yes. Uh, I was surprised. I was like, this is dorky as hell. Uh, I'm not going to like this. And I did. Yeah. So, I, have, I have not finished it Easily 10 times yet. as good as the X-Men anime. I'm sure. <laughs> that can't. The fact that you don't have to watch it, Doug, would help dramatically. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to finishing it. I've, I've gotten a few episodes deep now, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, there's going to be all sorts of duck fest duck feed programming on it as well um like we expect a lot of crossover from shows and stuff uh so i think radio free midworld's gonna be doing things waff uh, oh yeah everything to guppy like we're everybody's doing a little something a little something something so mm-hmm. and uh yeah monster of the week yeah. jeremy's mm-hmm. uh other podcast I one th- of jeremy's other podcast guesting i think we're going to do uh the top 10 supernatural monsters Ooh yeah so that'll be fun it'll be fun because uh that way you don't have to have a lot of experience with the hunks but we can still tell you about the hunk lore if people chat us into it and we get to see some ridiculous pictures of monsters on on the on stream so it'll be it should be a good time yeah yeah it'll be real fun um yeah so we uh we'd appreciate you tuning in um i assume this will be archived for people who don't make it but i don't actually know how we're going to do that so uh you want to tune in if you can yes uh because because of tech idiocy it might end up being <laughs> You, know, you might lose some of this stuff. Um, so yeah, so check it out. You can also uh, join us at Patreon if you go to patreon.com slash DuckBeatTV. Um, you can also leave us a rating review on Apple Podcast or a podcast addict. Would you like uh, me to read all those a, a rating or review? <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's what we, that we, me and Will do. We don't need to bite that steez. Okay. Unless you have one right there, then you can. Um, I don't. So yeah, I'm logging. <laughs> it's, it's asking me for my uh, like second authentication at a home address in, my, in this Gmail because I haven't logged in yet. So let's, yeah, let's skip right, right past let's, it. Let's skip that. Uh, so uh, good night. Good night.